We lost two rounds in a row, and hopefully that will change this episode. So let's go drop off Prowl's prize. You know what? We're going to do this. We're going to spread them all out. Makes it look like there's more in there. Enjoy! Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Bedrock Guide. You may notice a few changes here in just a moment. We've got a bunch of stuff laying out on the front yard. Or is this the backyard? Who's to say at this point? All I know is the inside of our house is empty. That's right. Today, it is time to say goodbye to the, the first shelter. This thing kept us safe for the very first night, and it is time for it to go. I've got some pretty ambitious goals for today's episode. First, we are going to completely demolish and redesign our starter house. It's not very good. We're going to make it better. Second, you guys, I've been reading the Discord comments. I've been reading the comment section comments. It's a lot of comments. Quit predicting how many times I'm going to die per episode. Today, it's going to be zero. And thirdly... We got to get a win against Prowl. I'm tired of losing. I know we've only lost twice because we've only played twice, but you know, a, a batting for zero record, it's not good. We're going to win today, I hope. I think I am going to leave this pillar in place though, just so we can say that part of our original design is still here. Uh, but yeah, pretty much the rest of this is just going to have to go. And there you have it. Our house is completely demolished, except for this little pillar right here. And you know what? We'll go ahead and take the little pillager banner off of there, and we're going to store it in our storage areas over here. This is all just temporary, but I did make an effort to try to organize some of this stuff. We will do an episode on storage here real soon. We've got our pillar here from the original house, and it's pretty close to the back of this hillside. We might redo some of the terraforming at some point, and we're going to have to do something with the mine entrance what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and count out nine one two three four five six seven eight nine and on the tenth block here we will put another block and then we're gonna come over to the opposite side of this right here and we're gonna go one two three four five and on the sixth block we will put another one right here so that there are five blocks in between uh what we're doing right now is we are basically putting up a wire frame Eventually, we will build these pillars up to where they will be a representation of the exact height of the building. But I'm just trying to show you how to get a basic building started. Okay, so we lucked out for the moment because we need to line up with this one and it's literally right next to here. So we need to do that. Then from here on, we're, we're actually going to have to move this stuff. So let me take care of rerouting where these cows are going to go. This could be an awful, awful mess. But you know what? That's the nature of the game. Here we go. You'll hear me say this phrase often. Hey, let's be smart about this because <laughs> it usually involves me doing something kind of dumb. But we're actually trying to be legitimately smart about the way that we transfer these pigs. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and put a little path right here, a little trough that is going to feed all of these pigs into this big open area and then we'll wall them off. Then we will connect the sheep up to this little pathway and feed them in, and then likewise with the cows. So we are legitimately being smart about this. It's not just something I say, it is something that we try to do. We are all closed off. We'll go ahead and break that. We'll break that, and then we'll say, hey, piggies, come on, let's go. Come on into your new bigger home, which is gonna get closed off anyway. We're gonna, we're gonna trap you in a small hole again. So <laughs> come on over, come on over. Don't be shy. All right, so there we go. Before they can get back across, we're just going to try to go boop, 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 boom, boom, and we lost one pig. That's fine. One thing you guys should be aware of is that this coming Sunday, at the point this video is releasing, if you're watching it in the future, this doesn't really apply to you, unless you want to go catch my streams from time to time, but this coming Sunday, Prowl and I will be streaming for the first time on Twitch from this world, so you won't want to miss it. It's going to be a lot of fun, so if you're not following me on Twitch already, be sure to do that so that you won't miss it. Sunday is going to be a good day. Come on, sheepies. Come on over. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. There's so many of them. <laughs> they didn't even all come over. Let's go, sheep. Let's go. We may actually have to extend this a little bit more for the sake of the cows because this ain't going to fly with uh, the space we have here. So let's go ahead and trap them in. 
You'll also notice that this episode is not going to have as many infographics about game mechanics. We might throw a few in here and there if something is interesting to talk about, but we are talking about mostly the creative aspect of Minecraft. There are a lot of tips and tricks that you can learn about building and creativity in Minecraft, and we will discuss plenty of those along the way while we're building. So hopefully you'll learn something a little bit new and exciting that will help you out in your Minecraft worlds. We don't need to move these guys back far, but we've made a little bit of a, a space back here that they can move into. So let's move them on, move them on. There we go, there we go, there we go. All the cows should be in now. We'll go ahead and block them back off. And then we can tear down this part of the fence and we should have plenty of room to build our house now. Now that we've got all of our animals moved out of the way and those guys are out of the way and we've got our basic plot in place we're gonna go ahead and start building out the wireframe so what we're gonna do we're gonna go over here to each individual log and pillar up four more so it will include the bottom one it will be five so one two three four five and we're gonna do that all the way around to every stump that you see in the ground on this plot when you are done, what you should have should look something a little bit like this. You may not do the exact same dimensions, but this is what we have to work with. We're gonna go ahead and just trace this on around, starting at the top, and just go all the way around the entire build. This is using a lot of logs. I am sure I'm going to get this comment in the comment section. Why are you wasting so many resources? We've, we've already had that comment a few times. <laughs> Uh, but we are under the assumption now that you are a little bit past the first day. Obviously, we've got plenty of resources set up. We've got trees that we've planted all around the area. The assumption is that you have enough supplies to do this. This is not a day one build, but it is still an early game starter house. So if you've got enough trees and resources to mine those trees, this should be no problem for you to build at all. Then last but not least for the wireframe, we are actually going to add on another little section here. We're gonna leave one block gap here and put one log all the way up to the top, just like this one. We'll do the same thing over here, and then we'll go ahead and connect all of this up. And wouldn't you know it, we just lucked out. We have exactly the right number of logs for this first floor. We'll have to do a little bit more mining to get the rest of the structure, but we're moving on to the next part of the main level. We've got some stone bricks here, and I will show you on screen how to craft those through an infographic. What we are gonna do with these stone bricks is go ahead and outline the inside of these wireframes. So we don't want it to be flush like this. We want it to be one block inside. So right off of this corner, we're gonna go all the way around the build until the entire thing is filled in. Now, the only exception would be this would be flush because we're going to cover it up like so, so that we can have the, the stone bricks as the interior walls and so they will double as the exterior. So we do kind of have to go wrap around this pillar right here. We'll have to do that maybe a couple of times, but as a general rule, Keep it inside the lines. Isn't that what they teach you in first grade? Keep keep the coloring in, inside the lines. Here's another thing that you should consider. I plotted this out in a testing world, which you should definitely do. If you don't have a testing world, get yourself a testing world. It's just basically making a super flat creative copy of a Minecraft world and uh, you know, starting to build things in it. When I built it, this was actually larger. I think I made a calculation mistake. So we're gonna go ahead and bust this out. And we're just gonna shift this entire room over just a smidge to make a little bit more room because now that you see what we're doing with this interior stuff, the interior space gets a lot smaller, a lot quicker because we are going inside of the frame and not flush with it. So just keep that in mind when you're building. There we go. So now we've got a little bit more room to work with. This space doesn't feel as cramped, especially when we start putting stuff in it. So let's recap really quick. We've got our wireframe in place, all of the logs, the pillars that are gonna outline the house, and we've got the basic structure for the walls in place, and it's starting to look like a house now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just fill in all of the empty space here with all of these stone bricks. This will absolutely not stay this way. We will go back in a little bit later and do some detailing to it. We'll bust out some windows. We'll do a little bit of texture variation, all things that we wanna talk about. 
In order to get into our house, we're gonna need a door, and this is the reason why I have used odd numbers. A lot of people use even numbers. I use odd for most of my builds because doorways look a lot nicer with an odd number in my opinion. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the fifth block right here in the middle would be the spot we wanna punch out. So we'll punch out one here and punch out one there, and that will be our doorway. Again, pretty flat, doesn't look interesting. We'll make this look better here in a second, but we're gonna go ahead and punch out windows in very much the same manner. We'll go around to the side here and punch out a window like right here. And I wanna avoid putting one here because it does line up flush with this wall. So I typically leave that alone. And for the sake of symmetry, I think having just a one by two window on this side of the wall will look just fine. Then we can go in here and bust out a little bit larger of a window off to the side, but then taking the same precautions to make sure that on the inside of this build, we do have a block to frame the window versus just having it flush like this. It, I, I, in my opinion, it just looks better. If you've got a little bit of a frame, it looks a little bit more natural for a building. These days, I'm really enjoying the idea of making some things off-centered and not flush with a particular part of the build. Maybe not as a general rule to do this all the time, but as the exception, it can look very, very cool. And just repeat this kind of thing all the way around the building. Detailing is one of my favorite parts of playing Minecraft because it can take a generic boring build like this and make it something a little bit special. So what we're gonna do to accomplish that is we'll start right here and count one block in and then we will go two blocks up with the same stone brick texture. Then we're going to take a stair and jump and place it down really quickly on top of that little pillar. And then we'll go on to the back side of this stair, aim at the very top because if you aim at the bottom, it's just going to place it just like this, a regular stair. But if you aim it at the top, it'll flip it upside down. Then we can go to the other side and do the same thing, but mirrored in the opposite direction. And you're starting to see where we're going with this. We're getting a little bit of an arch, but we need to connect it and round it out a little bit more. So we'll place a stair right here in the middle, facing upwards, just like so. And then to complete the build, we will put a slab right here on the underside of that stair, and then one slab on either side of it. And that completes the archway over the front door. But then we want the doorway to stand out a little bit more from the arch, so we're gonna bust these stone bricks out, and we're gonna replace them with logs, and then we will do the same right here at this door frame, and replace all three of those with logs. Don't worry about this now, we will get to interior detailing, and this will work itself out later, but from the exterior, this looks like a very nice framed doorway. I showed you in the first episode how to craft up a door, but we're gonna go ahead and do another one because I actually want a birch door this time around. I do not want the standard oak door. I don't think it looks as nice, and this will actually fit our detailing a little bit more. So we're just gonna place this flush right here at the front, and then we've got a very, very nice looking entryway. Something else worth mentioning as well is the stone cutter. This stone cutter will allow you to cut stone varieties into things like stone bricks and chiseled bricks and other things like that. You can craft stone bricks in a crafting table just by putting them in a formation like this, but then you're left with one leftover block. So the solution for that is if you go into the stone cutter, you can place all of them in here, choose the variety that you want, and then you can go ahead and craft up your stone bricks just like you would, and then you don't have that one left over. Diving even deeper into detailing, we've got some cobblestone, some cobblestone stairs, and our stone brick stairs, and we're gonna start shaking things up. We're gonna start busting out individual blocks in here and replacing them with cobblestone. Now, we're gonna be very, very sparse with this. We're not gonna overdo it because a little bit goes a long way. As you can see, that already looks a lot better. Maybe we'll add one in here down towards the bottom, make it look like it's kind of crumbling. Maybe we'll put one right here. Nope, 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 that's upside down. Yeah, that's not too bad, that's not too bad. I'm not sure how I feel about this one though. I think I wanna take it back out. And maybe we'll put this one here. Yep, I like it a lot better. It's a lot more spread out. We can go ahead and take our stone brick stairs and put one just like that. Makes it look like maybe a brick is missing from the wall. And maybe we can go over here and do the same thing right here. 
and have it face this direction. And we got a little small section taken out of the wall. Just kind of gives a little bit more interest and detail to all of our walls. So that's honestly pretty good. I wouldn't go any more than that. That's pretty busy as it is. I might even consider taking one of these back out and replacing it and then maybe put this one a little bit farther down like this. Yeah, that's actually really, really good right there. That's where we want to keep it. We don't want to go overdo it. That's just enough detail to give it a little bit more interest than just a flat wall. So let me just go ahead and take care of the rest of these walls. So I'm taking a quick break from the build to go play resource roulette with Prowl, but you won't see that till the end of the episode. So be sure to stay through to the end of the episode. And again, like and subscribe comment. All of those things are super, super helpful. Reason I'm telling you this now though, is because I do need to take a couple things over to him. He's given me two maps and he's given me a map of his place. As he continues to work and do things over in his base, this map will actually continue to update as he updates his copy of the map. So we're just going to hang on to it for now. But what I want to do is I want to make a copy of my map and I want to make sure that this area is filled in so that he can see everything that's over in our area. So hopefully we're not on a weird junk border. Oh, good. We are just like right on the edge of the map. That's not bad. So I'm just going to make a copy of this really quick and then go take it over to him and we will get back to building and you'll see the results of Resource Roulette here at the end of the episode. Ah. And stay out. You guys remember the days before scaffolding when dirt was scaffolding? Man, I really miss my real scaffolding. We gotta get some of that soon. We're up here on top of the build now because what we're gonna do before we start working on any kind of roof line, because that is coming very soon, we're going to go ahead and add a second story. One, two, three, four, five here. And then we'll repeat the same thing back in the, the section here and in the back corner there. This is where things are going to get a little bit dangerous for me. Me and Heights, they don't necessarily get along, but we're going to be careful. Right here is where we're going to start working on the roof line. We're not going to fill in any of the walls of the second floor until the roof line is complete because there will be some overlap. And I just want to make sure that we get this right. So I'm going to take a temporary block and place it right here and then place down a regular facing stair just like that. Then we can break our temporary block and just kind of peek over the back and place down an upside down stair and then a regular stair and then same thing an upside down stair on and on until we get to the center point of the roof line here now we could do more interesting shaped roofs with some curves with some slabs things like that but this is indeed a starter house with beginner mechanics so we'll get to some more interesting roof lines later in the series for this one i kind of wanted to keep things really simple just so that everybody could follow along so we'll do the same thing over here We'll go ahead and do the upside down stair, regular stair, upside down stair, regular stair, all the way to the center point here where it meets in the middle. What we're going to do here is we are going to take and place an upside down stair facing forward instead of facing sideways because that wouldn't look right. It wouldn't be centered. So we'll have it facing forward just like so. So we've got a flat roof line right here and we'll show you what that looks like in just a second. But I do want to go ahead and place a stair down right here just like that. And then one more upside downstair right here. Again, just a minor thing gives it a little bit of detail, a little bit of depth, and that looks pretty good. This is the first time in this build that we are going to use planks and it will break up the monotony of the log stone texture look. So we're just going to trace this entire thing, but we have two different color stairs. We've got oak and we've got birch. The reason we have oak and birch is because we want to do a little bit of texture variation. It's not going to be uniform by any means. It's just going to be kind of at random. So we'll go over here and maybe place one down here like this with one like that. It's good just to mix it up. It makes it feel like it's weathered. It makes it feel natural. Doesn't look uniform. Once we get to the center point up here, instead of placing stairs in the middle block, we're going to place planks just like that. And that will kind of finish off the look. And now we can go to the other side and start building the staircase up for this roof line. And then that's the front roof line all completed. And now this is starting to actually look like a legitimate house. The next thing that we want to do is fill in the middle section of this roof line. And that's where these guys come in. Shears will allow you to get wool without completely decimating the animal. And you'll actually get a few more pieces of wool per sheep if you do it this way, which is good because we're going to need a lot of wool for the next part of our house build. 
The great thing about this as well is as long as there's grass, which you can see these guys have been eating it up because they're hungry little fellows. As long as there's grass, they will regrow their wool and we can use them once again to get even more. You remember when we placed all of these upside down stairs in here? Well, that's important to have on the exterior of this roof line, but right here, we're actually gonna go ahead and bust all of these out because they will indeed get in the way of our build. And I'll show you here in just a second why that is. So as long as you make sure to leave the exterior stairs, this should work out just fine. When we go to place one of our wool blocks here, we're gonna have an empty gap where this stair is. We wanna make sure that there is wool behind it. That's why we had to break out these stairs so that we can place a full block right here. And then when you look at it from the front, you can see the wool poking through that little stair gap right there. So all we're gonna do is place wool all the way across the front of this building. And that's really starting to look very nice. Another nice thing that we can do for this front face of the building here is to do a little bit of fence detailing. Kind of the goal here is just to break up the monotony of a flat surface. So we'll go ahead and break out a couple of stairs. We'll put a fence here, put a fence here, maybe put a fence there. And then what we'll do is we'll take fences and we'll break this one out. We'll take a fence all the way across, break this one out all the way across till it meets up in the middle. It's very simple, it's nothing too crazy, but it brings the build even more to life at this point. This is almost looking like a finished house. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to finish all of the rest of the roof lines off camera and these walls right here, unless there's something really important we need to talk about. It's pretty much gonna be the same thing that we've already done. So there's no need to really rehash it all. You've already learned it. If you need to learn it again, just go back and rewatch the video. Okay, folks, I have been hard at work and I've got something pretty awesome to show you. Boom! How's that for a progress update right there? Now, it looks complete for all intents and purposes. It, it, it is complete. We could stop right here if we wanted to and it would look fantastic. But I've got a couple small detail elements I want to add to this before we call it a day. There's only a couple more detailing items that I want to do with you guys. One of them being a chimney, which I think maybe right here would be a good place for a chimney. We'll, we'll kind of put, put it in place and then see how it looks. So we're just going to go up a few blocks just like this and then maybe up with one of the cobblestone walls. Pretty basic, nothing too crazy. And maybe we can go ahead and expand this just a little bit by putting one right here. And then we can put another one right here and here. And then maybe dig this out just like that and put one more. Oh, we're out of walls, we're out of walls. What if we put just another block there? I think that kind of looks pretty good. Let's look at it from the ground. Yep, I like it a lot. It's not too big, doesn't overpower the roof. You can see it, but it's not anything too crazy. And we're just gonna come up here onto the top of the roof and drape some of this over as if there's some moss. It's kind of gotten overgrown over time. And we're just kinda gonna spam it around a little bit. Nothing too crazy, but enough to give it some color and just a little bit more depth and interest on this roof. Not that it's not interesting enough already, but a little bit of moss, a little bit of vines could could make this thing look pretty cool. So let's let's see what we can come up with here. This is one of those things that you need to eyeball and uh, make adjustments as you go. And I can already tell that is way too much. Again, I'm not happy with it. That's kind of the point of detailing is to take steps back and look at the result and uh, find things that you do like and then make adjustments. Like this right here, not overly happy with. This right here, not happy with at all. I actually really like this little section right here. And I think what I wanna do is just kind of bring it over the peak of the roof a little bit rather than running it down the roof. I think that could make a little bit more contrast to this angle right here. Uh, let's give that a try and see how it looks. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. That's looking very, very, very cool. So what we can do is start from this starting point right here and uh, kind of do the same thing that we did with these cobblestone and stairs on the walls. We can make minor adjustments to the rest of the roof. We don't want to overdo it. Less is more in a situation like this. So maybe we'll place a couple down like right here as if, you know, it's not getting enough sunlight. So some stuff is growing down. And before you know it, you will come out with something that you're really, really happy with. Look at this. This is not too much. 
but it's enough to know, oh, okay, this place looks a little overgrown. Maybe it's not quite abandoned, but uh, maybe they're not taking care of their roof very well. Blue Jay, you got to get better at taking care of your roof. <laughs> Oh, it just adds so much more interest to this house. I love it. The very last thing that we're gonna do to this house for today is we're gonna go grab some sand. I wonder where we can find some. <laughs> we got a whole desert right next door, so we're gonna grab some of this sand and we're gonna take it back over to our smelter here and toss it on in. And if you don't know, sand, when smelted, it turns into glass. Another little tip to stretch your glass a little bit farther, you can take these 12 pieces of glass and put them in arrangement like this so that there's three and three, two in each slot, and then you can get 32 pieces of glass panes, which in my opinion work way better for windows than standard glass because they do push back into the block ever so slightly. Again, we're talking about depth. So we're just gonna place some glass in here just like so, and then we've got our first set of windows, and we can go all the way around the building, filling in these gaps, and then this house is completely finished. Well, at least on the outside. Y you look on the inside, there's still grass, there's still empty walls, empty ceiling. Don't worry, that's coming in the next episode. We're gonna be working on the interior design. Well, that's it guys for the build. Let's go meet up with Prowl. Guys, look at this. Look at, what is, what is he doing? Prowl! What? What? What do you think you're doing? I, I, I'm just inspecting the roulette wheel. Inspecting? What does that mean? Does that mean you're you're putting numbers in there that are going to get rigged? Are you going to be able to pull like a nine or something without uh, w w without me pulling that? W am I going to get a one no. again? Is this why I've been Ow. losing? No. Ow! I swear, I was just I was just checking it out. Okay, okay, okay. Let's just go ahead and get this thing going. It's your turn to go first, so go ahead. And I don't it. think so. I don't think so, buddy. No, I know your games. I know your tricks. I've done this long enough with you. Now, you're going first. I'm going first. Yeah, you want me to go first so bad because I'll get a, a, a terrible number again. You're going first. <sighs> Fine. Okay. Step step back. Oh, your bad luck. Okay. I hate you. I already looked. I saw what you got. You got a six. I got a six. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to look. Tell me. Do it. Guys. Oh, hey, by the way, by the way, win this. I, I, upped the, I, I upped the stakes in these things, so you're going to have to pay out more this time, just so you know. I'm not paying out anything. I'm getting a nine. Ready? Here we okay. go. Three, two, one. <laughs> yes! Oh, seven. No. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, that's what oh, I'm God. talking about right there. That's what I'm talking right. about. We got a seven. All right, all right, all, all right. right. So I haven't, we haven't done this yet. Blue Jays, Blue Jays fan picks. So my fans have left some things in the comment section for me, for you to get for me. So let's Ooh. go ahead and see what they have. Okay, I'm clicking it. Go, Prowl, go, Prowl, go. Eh. What do we got? Iron. No, I don't want to give you <laughs> iron. <laughs> iron is great. Iron is great. I'm happy with iron. All right, All right, we got iron in there, and iron's worth a lot right now. I, it I upped is. It to like times seven, so we would double iron from times seven to times fourteen. If I pull it. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, what are we gonna get from my prize box? Ready? Give me something. I already have a lot come on, of. Come on, come on. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Oak logs times twelve. That's a lot Ooh. of oak logs. That I could, could use those for. I could use those for some things I'm working on. Oh god. Come on. Please, big uh, multiplier. Seven? <laughs> what? That's math in my head, math in my head. That's 84 oak logs. That's fine with me. I would That's happily cool. take those from you. All okay. right, I'll go I'll go get your logs and I'll have it for you by the beginning of next episode. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Prow, 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 prow. What? Hang on, you're, you're not a total loser today, only a partial one, because I do have a gift for you. What is it? Uh, in the last episode, you gave me a couple of maps, and I have Ooh. filled them in, so yes. you can have one for your location to see what I'm working on as things Ooh. progress. So there you go. Awesome. You got some fancy stuff going on. Cool. Fancy, fancy. All right, man. Thanks a lot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go pout again. Bye. 
But that's going to do it for today. Before you click off this video, if you wouldn't mind, be sure to leave a like and a comment in the comment section. And if you haven't subscribed already, be sure to do that. Maybe just leave a hello or a suggestion for a resource roulette item that you would love for Prowl to get for me the next time that we win this game. So glad we finally won today. Or maybe you want to share a tip or trick of your own that you use in your starter house builds. I would love to hear those. But thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one.